guys. Oh, Sean. <laughs> You could right. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. Yes. And you guys know me. This is Morello Kane with the hair debate. Okay, us talking about and introducing our legend in the industry, our special guest for today. Okay, he should be joining with me soon. And we're gonna set the atmosphere here. Okay, we don't own the rights to this music, but it kind of sets the tone of everything that's been going on right now. Hello, hello, yes. Thank you guys for joining and being with me. I will have my special guest here. He is. Let's bring you in. Hey there, hey there. Mr. P, yes. how you doing? I'm good. What about you? Oh, I am doing lovely. I am doing lovely. Thank you so much for being our special guest well, I appreciate today. <laughs> yes, we are here. It's the hair debate. Our legend in the industry. Oh, there is peace. Well, I'm excited. Yes, to be yes, here. yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Darius. When I tell you a legend in the industry, okay, international brand that you have, a speaker, author, okay, salon owner. I, there, I, and I'm just kind of scraping the grounds here, you know, just level-wise on who you are and, and what you have broken ground into doing in the industry. But then also, too, go ahead and tell us a little bit more in detail on what you have going on and who you are, how long you've been in the industry. Well, it's it's a lot going on. I'll start off with that. I um, I I never imagined. I've been doing hair for over twenty years, and I never in my career imagined anything happening as devastating as this has been in many yes. cases. Now, there are a lot of pros to what's going on, but when you think about yes. the fatalities and the mortalities yes. um, that are taking place, it's just a lot. So. We're dealing with changes yes. that have to take place every single day. And yes. it makes me very grateful for my journey and for my experience. So I've been treating and styling hair for over 20 years. And um, wow. I love it. I travel all over the world teaching and speaking on the topic of business and professional yes. development, but also teach on, teach yes. on the topic of natural Afro texture hair. And I teach on the platform to professionals who want to learn to cultivate um, and facilitate smooth experiences for their clients with natural hair. But I also help the lay person to best maintain their hair in between salon visits. Yes. Because I am an advocate yes. for people going into the salon and getting their hair professionally treated first. But when you're in Absolutely. areas where there is no focus on natural Afro texture hair, I help give some guidance in the between phases yes. so that you're not so rely you're not relying so heavily on YouTube videos or um, absolutely type of resources but you can hear from professionals that can give you professional expertise and experience absolutely. with whatever your hair texture condition length or type may be so, absolutely absolutely um, I've diversified my career into as you mentioned before being an author and becoming a yes. speaker and you know really help really helping to catapult other people to be able to take their careers to that place because if we haven't learned anything with this pandemic it's that we have to yes. be flexible enough to diversify have our to careers be. and our portfolios yes. in this industry and so throughout the pandemic over the last three months we've been really helping hairstylists and barbers and industry professionals, specifically hair care professionals, with being prepared yes. for everything that is here and for other things that are to come. And unfortunately, Absolutely. many of us were not prepared for this. As I said before, not when, at all. When, regardless of what the, 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 the disaster has been in the country, if it was an economic disaster, hairstylists, we came up. If it was, a, did. we always came up. If it was a flood, a natural disaster, or economic, it didn't matter. 
we always came up with those, when people are depressed, they go get their hair done. They go get their nails do done. It. They do those types of do. treatments. But when your business is forced to close, that changes it, everything. Right. Right. So, right. So I've been really, um, me alongside my wife, we've been working together tirelessly, you know, producing content for hair care professionals to be able to move forward. Yes. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody for not having, uh, having it together because beauty schools don't right. teach you how to have it together. They teach you how to do hair. Not at all. They teach you how to pass state board, but they don't teach you how to That's have it. your businesses in order. Absolutely. And especially going through what we just did with the pandemic. Yes. It, no one was ready. Nobody, no one was there ready. was no way that we could be ready. There was no yes. way, there's no way to prepare for anything like this. Like this is my wife calls it we're in a Netflix movie. Like this this like some stuff that didn't happen on Netflix and we in it, you know, right in the middle of it. And so no. you know, there was no way but but instead of pointing the finger at hairstylists and barbers for not having it together. We are yes. you know, continuously producing content and resources so that hairstylists don't have to try to do what you don't know how to do. We do it, and all you got to do is fill in the blanks. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, with what you just stated, it's preparing also, too, on what's to come. Yes. Because this is not the last. No. It, it was, you know, no. It's the first that we have seen, but definitely you know, won't be the last. Right. So preparation is key. Economics, <laughs> we were trained on that. And, and, and not so much a training. We just adapt to it. But like you just said, with the pandemic, oh, that was something new and different. So what's the atmosphere like come as we are going through this, you know, pandemic there in Alabama? So right now, um, I would say that everything is very uncertain and everything is very unpredictable, okay. you know, with Okay. Uh, we just had a series, a series of peaceful protests, but also we've had yes. riots that have resulted yes. in a lot of businesses, um, particularly black businesses, that have experienced a greater devastation. So we were already experiencing um, an economic disadvantage because of having to be closed right. in many cases if you weren't essential. But to right. then have someone to tear your business up and and, uh, and, and destroy it. Everybody didn't have Absolutely. the proper insurances in place. Everybody didn't have, even if they did have the insurances, uh, your insurance ain't going to operate. It's not going to work fast enough Ready. to get you going the next day. Absolutely. And so it still becomes Absolutely. an economic loss for a lot of businesses. And so right now in Birmingham, Alabama, that's one of the disadvantages that many of our black owned businesses are experiencing just, you know, an even greater devastation on top of the pandemic that is still here. And right, is that you know, it is. so you're dealing with uh, the issues of the riots that are um, ironically a result of peaceful protests, and right, you know, and then still doing that. And so, I would say that it is progressive because I don't see many businesses okay. letting that get them down. I would say that it's progressive, although it is a very okay. devastating situation to be in when you wake Jeez. up to news that your business has been trashed. No, absolutely. And when I saw that online, I mean, again, your heart is with the situation that had happened, you know, tragically. So your heart is there. But then you watching this going on online. One of the things that I can say is that I love to see that diversity of the individuals that were out there peacefully, you know, um, and, and then, I mean, but then too, when it came to the rise, it was diverse. It was, you know, and so being in the climate with where things are at right now, you know, our mayor, um, Keisha Bottoms actually did an interview. And one of the things that she stated is that how can we move beyond this, past this? Because as we understand that change is, is inevitable at this point, you know, definitely I see change coming. Okay. So. But when I look at, at our industry, at an industry that is still segregated, would you say that? Oh, yeah. It's, it's always been segregated. And it's separate. But, but the thing yes. is, is that it's a deep-rooted segregation that goes on. Um, I would say that this segregation is deeply rooted in the formative curriculum for hairstylists. Because one of the things yes. that I always teach as, an, as your natural hair expert, I always teach that natural hair is not extensively covered 
in any beauty school program worldwide. Absolutely. It's not even in the books. Absolutely. It's not in the books. It's not a mandatory part of the curriculum. The only thing that is a primary focus uh, when it comes to hair styling is cutting, coloring, sanitation, and bacteriology. But there's no Absolutely. focus on, and then when you think about Afro hair cutting and Afro hair styling, there's very little yes. to no focus on that at all. And so one of the things yes. that's happened in the overall beauty industry, the market experienced a shift. And most of the women who were wearing their hair straight with chemical processes decided, yes. I don't want to wear chemical processes anymore. And even if they still wear their hair straight, um, they are wearing their hair straight with um, flat iron treatments or thermal treatments is yes. with chemical treatments and the industry wasn't prepared neither prepared nor Ab was not for that and, and was not beyond that there's still a market that's still untapped with women and men who want to wear curly textures with their afro hair yes. well if you weren't taught that in school on a fundamental level yes. You know, and that means that there are very few people out there who are really experts in the industry to be able to teach it. Absolutely. And that means that Absolutely. we still have a failed curriculum because as beauty professionals, we should be able to accommodate any texture, any length, any. and any condition. Absolutely. And although many you of better us say, say that, that we can, we really cannot. Yeah. And we're having uh, to yes. also line up with the layperson and look to YouTube as an educational resource for somebody they do. who is only they an do. expert at their own hair and not a variety of conditions. Because if you've got somebody who's coming with a case of uh, CCCA, cicatrices, um, central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, you can't go on YouTube yes. and find out what you need to do to treat that situation Cannot. or the you, best style option for that. I'm just Understand that, guys. You cannot. You can't. Okay. You you heard from experts. That's yes. Professional expertise, and so because from a from from a foundation standpoint, the industry has locked blocked out Afro hair that we aren't even yes. equipped to be able to accommodate our own people with hair. So that was the foundation Absolutely. of segregation. Where you don't see enough of us in the books. When you go oh, and you look at yes. the campaigns, you rarely see women who look like you or men who look yes. like me on some of the leading brands like your Pantene, like your L'Oreal brands, like your, um, just those those major brands. You rarely see images that look like us. And if you do, they still showcase us in a way that um, showcases racial ambiguity. So that means that you don't know what color they are. Like she, she looked like Denise Hartley yes. with locks as opposed to um, I read with locks. And so, and then there's not, that doesn't mean that the Lisa Bonet look is not true, but because there's such a, a, a vast array of images that it are encompassed in, in the Afro um, diaspora, we can't just put one image and say that's the image for black people. And so that's no, no, absolutely. And then when it comes to like beauty shows and stuff like that, the leading beauty shows, I'm putting all this in quotes, the leading beauty the, the shows black. do not they never recognize black experts as headliners. They only showcase yes. your, um, your guy tang. It's a your, certain look. Um, it's a certain your, look. Um, Nick Arojo's and your, um, just those people, Tabitha, I don't know Tabitha's last name, the girl that had the show on the TV, Bravo, huh? But when you show no, them, they right. show that, and there's no, there's no, and I don't see much diversity at all because it's still, a showcase of only ha straight hair textures, people who are naturally born with straight hair. That's what we typically see. And so there's a major uh, showcase of uh, segregation and separation. And I believe that is intentional. Uh, I'm not going to make any excuses for the beauty industry to make it seem like we're not because as black hair care professionals, we've always wanted to be included. And we have been fighting for inclusion since we've been here. And, yes. and now... I do think that there are going to be some changes made with the beauty industry, but it is only for PR purposes. Yes. It is not because they want us there. It's because I've got to make sure that, you know, the behind the chair show still looks good. I got to make sure that premiere right. is showcasing itself as diverse. But last year in 2019, they weren't thinking about us. And so, and again, people like you and I, we, we have never been featured as headliners.
in, in, in the uh, not at all. beauty industry. And we've got plenty of valuable content. Whenever they, I know um, one of our industry colleagues and leaders and pillars, uh, Mickey Wright, one of the things that she mentioned was that, you know, in all of these shows, there are there was never a time where they would recruit us sure. as experts. They always wanted to throw us in a textured hair category. And most black yes. hair stylists don't even do textured hair. They do straight cuts, colors, all of that. So that means that we could have been featured. And that's what they feature. We could have we could have been featured a long time ago. And we can do it, we can teach and style circles around most of the people who are you know their current headline. Can, we can out can. them. We can do so much more sure. that they're not able to do. And the thing about being a black hairstylist is that if you can't do nothing as a black hairstylist, you got to be able to do everything because everything gonna sit in your hair. Oh, have to be. Stylist. Yes. And so. You yes, know, I know that I'm talking a lot, but it's so I just want to make sure that I'm answering your question clearly mm -hmm. and really tapping into all the areas that I know of that I have experienced as far as being um, under and unrecognized and under celebrated um, in the beauty industry. That's those are just some of the shows um, that have not recognized us or some of the avenues in which the industry have just blocked us out. No, absolutely. You know, um, when I tell you, Addison, she made a statement on here and, and she was basically saying that she is having to leave her stylist because her stylist is not trained with, you know, kinky hair. That should not be in this day and time. No. You know, should not be, you know. But again, it's the level of education yeah. that was allowed for us to receive. And every school was different. Yeah. You know, depending upon your location, yes. it was different. That's true. Okay, so then you come out here in the real world, you know, from school, and then, you know, you would have individuals that would say, no, you can't do my hair. You know, you can't do my hair. I don't feel comfortable with you. You know, and so now is the time that we address the segregation that, like you stated, has always been here in our industry yes. because these are the things that need to involve evolve in order for it to be changed yeah would you agree yeah i agree i was thinking about a situation where um because i um one of the things one of the areas in which i've diversified my career is working on set and whenever um like any actor or actress who is in the film or theater whatever media industry they're in whether it's commercial work or whatever most of the people who are in the beauty industry union the hair and makeup union vanity as they call it yes are not black and so when you get a black person yeah. who's an actor or an actress and you got somebody who is non-black coming up to us, just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do your hair. You're like, wait a minute, what the? Uh, 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 okay, pause. <laughs> do you know what you're doing you did. with this, first of all? Because I got locks. You should Say not locks. this. You know, and then, you know, there's that. And then, you know, but when it's the other way, because I know for me, um, operating as a, a, a black hairstylist, I'm able to do any texture, any length, any condition of hair. It doesn't matter yes. what it is. Although natural hair is my chosen specialty, I am trained and certified yes. to do everything. And so I remember being on set and um, there was a non-black um, actress who was um, in a leading role. And she, um, she was so nervous that I was about to do her hair, which is like, oh gosh, does he know what he's doing? And I'm like, baby, you don't even understand. I'm about to give you the best look of your life. I'm about to give you your best right. look. Right. You know, and so, but, but she was so afraid. And so, you know, I think that once they're become, once we start to experience more inclusion and a true melting pot in the industry, that yes. way the customer base will start to experience some comfort you know, in having their hair that done, is true. regardless of who the person that is, is. true. I'm just trusting that if this film, if this motion picture production chose you to be the stylist, that you're going to give me the best look for this um, character, you know? Right. So, right. Okay. So, so now for individuals that are actually working in a diverse salon, okay, how can they go about, you know, kind of walking? Because right now the atmosphere is thick when it, the racial tension. Okay, so how can they move forward in a dialogue? Because, you know, in school, we were taught, you don't touch that. You don't touch what's within the news. Yeah. You don't touch politics. You don't touch that. But would you say that we have to, the salon may be an atmosphere where we can have an open, honest dialogue and start talking about these changes that need to happen in respecting each other's views. 
So I think so. I think that uh, because the salon has always been that place across the board, but we've got to always also recognize that. So there are two ends of the spectrum. There's the yin and the yang. So for Black people, the salon has been where we have culturally come together. The, the civil rights movement that took place back in the 1950s into the 60s, you know, a lot of those plannings took place in the beauty salons, in the barber shops. Dead. Well, on the flip side, whenever there was a KK rally getting ready to pop off, they met in the barber shop too. So that means right. that the opposite conversation was happening in their salons. There was a comfort there. There was, was a community gathering, whether it was a salon or the uh, barber shop. And so first we got to understand and recognize that this is where our cultural and community planning take, has yes. been in place historically. Now, two, the conversation. You better say now, that there. The conversation, I don't think, will be a peaceful conversation without a facilitator or a mediator. Because I yes. know that there have been some heated conversations here at Higher Beauty here in Birmingham. And, you know, okay. if it wasn't for um, me or some of the team members or the salon manager, those conversations could have turned into brawls. And so we and so okay. having the conversation, I think that the conversation has to first take place on an administrative level with the team without okay. outside influence of customers. So that's the yes. first thing. So if you're a stylist who is working in a quote unquote diverse salon, because I can't call it diverse if it's not, if you're the only black person working in an all white salon, that's not diverse. That just means that you're the only black person working in there. You no, know? no, you better say that. So, yeah. You better say that. Or yeah. if you're the only Latino or the only Asian, or if you're in a black salon and you're the only yeah. white one in there, that means that that's not diverse. That just means diverse. That means you're the only white person in there. So it is. we have to call it what it is. That's not truly diverse. You know, diverse would be, you know, more of an even distribution than, you know, Absolutely. just that one person to call it diverse. So there's that. But then we have to acknowledge, like, because this right here, in many cases, is not our battle to fight. We can fight for equality. But as far as the yes. name is concerned, white people, that's their battle. That's what they got to do. Right. That's where white people got to go into their churches and talk about it in their churches. They got to go into their homes and talk about these issues or these injustices uh, to their families. They got to talk about this at yes. their family reunions. They got to talk about this on the golf course. They got to talk about this, you know, at the spa at wherever they go. This is an internal intracultural conversation that they have to it has have to be. with each other. It child. has to be. Because we've been talking it about it for over a century now. We've been talking about it for a very long time, well over a century. Yes. So we can't talk no more. When we talk about it, it doesn't make as much change as it will when they start to talk about it with each other. Because it's a mind. Exactly. Thing. You know, if you've been, so my wife and I, we have five children. And one of the things that we homeschool, like we're right now we're having to homeschool because of just the pandemic. Okay. But prior to this, we homeschooled our children for five years. Now, they were in school when all this happened, but three years ago, almost four years ago, we, we were homeschooling our children. And one of the things that we would teach um, pro, uh, from on a primary level with them was stereotyping, what that means to be stereotyped, yes. what a positive stereotype and what a negative stereotype is so that they can recognize when you are living in this world on the field, how you're being stereotyped and some of the negative yes. effects that come from being stereotyped because a lot of the reasons that we are being killed, you know, with un with no consequences is, is because of negative stereotypes. If you're taught from your childhood that black people steal, that black people kill, that black people rape, it, that black people murder. It's the perception. If that's what your it's, perception yes. is of black people, then that means from the jump, when you see a black person coming, you on guard, you think, oh, I got to shoot or they going to Yes, you me. are. And that's not exactly. the those are stereotypes. If that's all you see in the media, if that's all you see in the movies, that means that that propaganda has influenced you in such a way that you think that your life is at stake whenever you come across a black person. And so that's one yes. of the things. So when I say they got to have the conversation, they've got to have the conversation, but we've got to have the conversation in our community with our Absolutely. children and with our families and friends and let them know this, you know, um, stereotypes and negative propaganda is the reason that a lot of these murders are happening and are justified. And that's where it's got to stop because the majority have, of, have people, to. you know, especially for black people, you know, our track record has not showcased us as being global murderers. Our track records have yes. not showcased us as being 
um, mer um global rapist because you see yes. a bunch of racial ambiguity that ain't because it was a bunch of love relationships back in the day that's a result of race exactly so that means that if there's a, a person who is the culprit of rape or robbery it's not black people Th right it's, it's, exactly it's, and that has been white people and i ain't afraid to say that no no but but that is the truth you know? that is the truth and, and that's the thing it's like we have to find a way of having these conversations yeah. Because again, walking about as though, you know, where whereas we understand each other and we're having these conversations. But again, if you're servicing someone of the you know, of a different race than yourself, it's like it's okay. But like you said, it's doing doing it in a manner where you have someone that can facilitate, you know, and and you have to respect the other person's point of view. You gotta, you you know, gotta respect their culture and their to, background. Absolutely. And stay professional. Yeah. Well, that's the thing for me. As long as everybody is always keeping it professional, there is no room to yes. offend anybody. Things become offensive yes. when people start to bring their personal lives and their personal views and personal perspectives into the professional sector. And I know that, you know, from a, a hairstyling standpoint, we've always been recognized as that place of, you know, oh, you can come and be who you want to be and say what you want to say in yes. here. But there are some things you can say what you want to say, but you must say it with respect. You got to say Absolutely. it with, and you got to do it with respect again. You know, I'm not afraid. I can do anybody's hair. And, you know, as yes. a person, I'm always open to a diverse showcase of beauty, a diverse showcase of everything. Um, I'm not anti anything. And so whenever I speak in my right. pro blackness, pro black don't mean anti anything. The truth of the Absolutely. matter is, you know, we are not, uh, we are not, as, as, as black people, we are not robbers. We are not thieves. We are not rapists. We are not murderers. We're not, we're not those bad things. As humans, many yes. of us are. That's a human issue. Yes. That's not a black issue. That ain't necessarily a white issue. That's not an Asian issue. You're That's right. Indian issue. That's a human issue. Because if we are not the majority race in the United States, that means, and, and there are murders that go far beyond our race. That means that that's proof that it's not a black thing, you know, exactly. based on population exactly. and just stats. So absolutely. So, so as far as like, you know, facilitating um, and cultivating a diverse atmosphere, that means that the conversation yes. um, has to take place in the home. Like we, it's, it doesn't start okay. in the beauty salon. That starts in the home and it starts in the churches. And that's the thing yes. because a lot of the segregation takes place in the churches. You don't see a lot of churches it does. Exactly because even right now with all of these things that have been, all of the injustices that have taken place, because even beyond the murders and the police brutality, there's still a lot of systemic injustices that many of us experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's, yeah, okay. You know, that's not being talked about. It's not being talked about in the black churches. It's not being talked about in the white churches. And even when it's being discussed, we only talk about the problems. We don't address what the solutions are to the problems. And so Absolutely. if there's no conversation about the solutions, then there's no change that's going to ever take place. Now, I am very grateful that, you know, right now, I think that Dr. Martin Luther King um, Jr., would be would 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 be very happy from an outside perspective of what our viewpoint of what's happening because when we see the protesting take place you see black kids and white kids and asian kids and indian kids you see people of all people walking around walking you together do. hand in hand for you know for equality and for for injustices yes. Uh, to stop the injustices. That's something that would have never happened in 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, even 2000. It took being in 2020, you know, for that to happen. And that's a beautiful Did. thing. That means that the millennial generation that everybody is always dogging out, it's that generation who had to go to school together, who had to go to church together. Yes. But they don't know life without Hunter, don't know life without Raekwon. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, they, they don't know life without Becky. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. And I'm sorry to sound stereotypical right there. But we know that, though, we know what the difference is when I say Shay Shay and Haley. You know it's a difference. You know. No, no, absolutely. And so so they've, got, they've been forced to go to school together. And so these are people who they really are friends. 
and you're not going to kill my friend. You're not going to murder my friend, daddy, in, in the street and think I'm not going to say nothing. Daddy, that was wrong. Mama, that was wrong. That, right. Daddy, that was exactly. Wrong. And so that's why you see people coming together, you know, of different races and different backgrounds and different socioeconomic statuses who are able to come together and walk for walk for peace and walk for unity and walk for justice. And so now, because that's taking place, I think that we will start to experience some systemic changes now because there's a new okay. generation of people that's who right. are not here for it. And I'm glad to be alive not at, at all. this time. I'm glad to be able to witness it, you know, to witness that. Time. That's a beautiful thing to me. And it is, and it is. And what I've come to realize to understand as well is when we start seeing this change here that's, that's happening, as a wave is going to go, you know, across nations and truly affect change. But then also, too, we're going to see that transformation happen also in the salon industry. Oh, absolutely. We have to. So I'm so looking forward to that because yeah. it's time for a change. Well, and it's going to happen again, like I said, even if the if, even if the original reasoning is for PR, because I think a lot of it is going to be, oh, we've got to let them, because we can't look bad. We can't let our organization be that organization that's not showcasing diversity. So please know yes. that 2021, behind the chair show, premiere show, um, what's another one? Um, BT, no, um, IB, whatever. All these different shows, International Beauty Show, I think it's IBS. All these different shows. International, yes. Yes, they are going to showcase a diverse lineup now because, because it's being ushered by the new generation. Think about it. I think about like when I discussed the hair industry changing with natural hair earlier, um, that was because of the millennial generation getting on, getting online and teaching people, no, I'm not getting this no more. I'm gonna wear my natural hair. And that made it yes. okay for people to do it. Well, now because you've got this same generation of people who are now walking for justice and who are now walking for equality, People are going to have to follow suit now. I ain't ever seen no major brands like uh, Ben and Jerry's get on and say, what did they say? They got one, excuse my French, but Ben and Jerry's said, fuck racism. And they were very, they were open about it. They were clear. They were yes, a major exactly. brand like that who has everything to lose. But them to be bold enough to say that, they just like, no, nah, we don't care anymore. That is wrong. Because Exactly. But, but like again, free. we are out here. Exactly, but we are out here too patronizing these businesses, yes. and they understand that. Yeah, they understand everybody that. Ice cream. They know it, <laughs> right? You know, everybody like that. No, absolutely. So yeah, <laughs> right? You know, exactly. And we will, we will get that butter pecan. Okay, I'm, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, it, it is. It's very nice to see these corporations stand up yeah. and support you know, our battle and what we have going yeah. on as well. And I tell you, I thank you. It's, you know, so so what I've come to, because again, is understanding and, and we're saying that we do see the issues that's going on here, you know, um, and, and how it's affected industries. It has affected our industry, the salon industry. And so, like you said, start having the conversations at home first. Yeah. You know, if you are servicing other individuals of other ethnicities, other, you know, races, then um, if, if you start the conversation at home, it, you you will feel a little bit more comfortable having it in the salon. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we want the client to be comfortable, you know, but again, it's not walking on eggshells and we need to start addressing what's going on right here because again, one of the main industries that needs to break the segregation is the salon industry. Yeah. And the salon industry can do that, but that all comes from an educational standpoint. That means, like, again, it's a systemic issue. And once we start yes. to really adjust the systems and change the systems, that's when we'll start to experience, and not just see, but experience the change that's going to make the world um, really flow easier. That's when we'll start to see a greater economic impact spread across the board. So it's going to take a... You know, the thing is, is that most people are pretty passive anyway. A lot of people are afraid to have conversation because they are they're afraid that or I'm going to say we as people, we're afraid that we won't be able to control our anger or our emotions yeah. in the conversation. And that's one of the reasons that I'm big. I'm a big advocate of, you know, mental health being addressed, going and getting some therapy so that yes. you can know how to express yourself in such a way that is not um, 
controlled by your emotions, that you can come from a logical yeah. place, allow your, feel what you're going to feel, because it doesn't make our emotions bad, Absolutely. whatever they are. We want to feel what we're going to yes. feel, but we got to make sure that we know how to pro properly navigate as well as articulate what it is that we're going to say so that it's not damaging. Now, it's okay to, because there are some situations in which offense is okay. You know, sometimes yeah, the folks right. got to be rocked because everything ain't yes. good right now. But, you know, if but in those cases, you still got to be able to bring it home peacefully. You know, I got yes. to address the truth. Like, I was able to address, you know, the fact that my ladies ain't hardly, I mean, it wasn't until Diane Bailey and, you know, her um, collaborators decided to come together and create a natural hair edition of the Miladies brand that you even saw that. But that book is still not in the schools. You don't see a lot of schools still purchasing that book to teach out of. And then, you that's know, right. and if you don't work with my ladies, Pivot Point still hasn't done it. Um, what are some of the, and a lot of the other books, you know, that are out there, a lot of the um, curriculums, they don't cover it. And so, they you know, don't. So the beauty industry is a whole other, we got to handle stuff inside before we can even have the conversation. Like, you know, the powers that be, when you talk about cosmetology boards in various states, you know, a lot of the okay. curriculum is extremely antiquated. And so that means that yes. it's, been it's not even benefiting non-black people because it's so antiquated. Like if you still got to do a curly, if you got to do a perm set, you know what I'm saying? Or um, a perm, what is it? A curly perm, you know, set to even showcase proficiency or cold waves. You got, if, if I got to do that to showcase that I'm qualified to do hair, that means that this is dated. Because... The, it, and it is. It, 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 in right. Because like we're it, not even using it. Right. And so... So that it, that means that it's got to include some, it's got to include more. So I think that in the beauty industry, we have to start, you know, from that and make sure that we are including a diverse showcase of textures and cultures that wear these, um, okay. that wear these textures because, you know, like this is the curly thing, the texture thing is not even just a black thing. Like there are plenty of non-black people right. who have been straightening their hair because they're afraid to wear their curls because, you know, it's viewed as frizzy and ugly and um, un that's right. That's and right. unprofessional and, you know, and that's not the case. You know, you just got to know how to work with, but the reason that that, the reason that that perception uh, exists is because schools don't teach you how to navigate through curls. I'm going to make exactly. it a curly thing. Schools have not taught us how to work with curls, whether we're dealing with tight curls or loose curls. We have not learned curls. We have only learned Absolutely. to straighten, cut, color hair. And we were taught to be clean with it, but most of us hair salons, we can't even front. We've been real dirty. Barbershops nasty. <laughs> hair salons been nasty. You know, so the great thing about this pandemic is that it forced some people to just get clean. Truly forced. Like, you just started using Lysol? I mean, you just started using right. Clorox, really? You just bought some barbicide for the first time? You know. No, 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 right. <laughs> you, right. You washing your cakes? Right. No, you no, no. Exactly. Cakes, really? Okay. <laughs> So, so no, you are absolutely correct. So again, it is going to the state board at the curriculum level, these schools, and mandating change for that. Absolutely. But you know what? I'm going to actually reach out to some educators to see if I can kind of get them to come in and sit on a panel discussion with you and I. Yeah, I would love to. I'm, in, yeah. I'm here for it, yes. Yes. Well, I tell you, Mr. Peace, honey, we're going to bring that name and create peace all the way around. I'm here to tell you in this industry, I love what you're doing and, you know, um, breaking the ground and creating, you know, evolving this industry. Thank you so much for everything that you give to us in this industry. But again, I'm definitely going to get with um, one of the educators and, and we're going to evolve this conversation some more because we're going to, at this point, talk about the changes that does need to have with the curriculum, you know, at the schools, get some directors and whatnot here on the panel. Let's discuss this. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Can I and and we're going to come back on another live, you know, um, and then do a panel discussion on this. Can I add one more thing to what you just said? Oh, please do. So the reason that this diverse um, capability with hairstyling is so important because it's not, I know some people are just like, you know, oh, we've got to keep this, you know, like just, it within the culture and I, I, I agree with that to a certain point but 
if you are someone who is in beauty school and you decide that you want to diversify your career to be able to do commercial yes. hair, you want to do runway hair, you want to do hair yes. for cinema, you want to do hair, you have to be able to do everything. And there are you characters, do. you got to be able to do the hair for any kind of character. Exactly. And if you can't exactly. do that, that means that your system, your curricular system has failed you. Because it doesn't matter exactly. what your race is, it doesn't matter what your background is, the book should be inclusive enough to have you be able to accommodate the needs of any situation in which your skill um, is needed. Absolutely. Exactly. But then also, too, absolutely. And then also, too, it, it places you in a comfortability. Yeah, you know, to where you don't feel intimidated, right? You know, I'm um, not only in doing the hair, but then too that you feel equal in the sense that I can hold a conversation with you and be comfortable. Absolutely, we right. need to get to that level. Right, <laughs> that's it. No, absolutely. And so I tell you, uh, great conversation, and thank you so much for what you know. Everything that you stated there was definitely on point. And also, too, you've opened the doors for us to continue and add to this. Because, again, in order for us to create change, it takes much more than just you and I. We have, you know, set the pace, you know, with the, do with the dialogue regarding it, you know, um, to have this conversation. But it needs to evolve a little bit more. And so definitely, I'm good at pushing the buttons and talking about it. That, that is, you know, I'm all for change. You know, and so again, my name is Morello Kane. You, I tell you, the legend here, there, there is peace. Thank you again. Where can our um, viewers and followers get information? You know, regarding your brand. So, if you want, so you can follow. Um, you can follow us at the Higher Beauty Style Network. I'm gonna see if I can type it in right now. Um, Higher Beauty yes. Style Network. I think I posted that. Okay, I think that went in. So High Beauty Style Network is our brand. And so that's a platform that is created to help with the professional and business development of hairstylists across the board. So it doesn't matter who you are. And if you want to grow professionally and catapult your career to another place and increase your earnings while doing so, that's what we okay. offer. So you can follow at High Beauty Style Network on Facebook or on Instagram. And um, if you want to follow me, I'm at Darius Peace. That's D-A-R-R-I-U-S-P-S. It's right here. So you can always friend me on social media. And, you know, I typically will post good content. Um, I, I, if I'm going to post something, it's going to be meaningful. It is not um, just, I'm, I'm not one who's going to post selfies. Like, ooh, look at me, look at my hair today. <laughs> I'm not doing that. What I'm yes. doing is I'm posting things that will elevate us as people and elevate us as a community. So it's typically on my personal page, it's usually showcasing um, parenthood. It's usually showcasing love and romance. It's usually showcasing yes. um, business, uh, business development, community, activism. It's showcasing all of those things. Those are, those are the kind of images that one will see. But on the professional pages, it's going to be strictly professional. It's all, uh, all about the business all about the business absolutely absolutely well i tell you there you have it please go connect okay well how your beauty style network do that and again my name is marello kane i'm on all platforms as the hair debate um also too um we have this is going to be also a place so if you did not get a chance to view the full interview because i mean you know Darius went in okay let me just say that he went in and so we're going to have it. It's, it's going to be in the Legends Department um, area on our YouTube um, page at the Hair Debate. Again, my name is Morello Kane. We use hair to reconstruct the mindsets of individuals for change in the community. That's what we do, the Hair Debate, where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. Thank you again. We're going to come back again with another interview. Thank right. you, Mr. Peace. Y'all have a happy. Bye-bye. Um,